Yeah, if you guys haven't heard yet, it looks like Starrett is about to get bought out by a private equity firm. So for today's tool lore video, I thought we'd go over the history of the L.S. Starrett Company. The story begins in 1868 when Leroy Starrett was working for Athol Machine Company in Athol, Massachusetts. Leroy had designed a chopping machine for Athol and had helped start up the company, but they had a falling out, and he would go on to found his own company, the L.S. Starrett Company, in 1880. He would produce measuring tools for both carpenters and machinists, as well as saw blades. Starrett would actually go on to purchase his previous employer's company, Athol Machine, in 1905, adding their vices to the Starrett lineup. Leroy Starrett would patent many more precision devices all the way up until his death in 1922. The company was reincorporated in 1929. I can't find the exact year that they went public, but it would have been sometime after this. They traded on the New York Stock Exchange as SCX. The Starrett family would retain 40% of the stock. Along with the Great Depression, Starrett suffered some setbacks in the 1930s. An ice dam broke in the winter of 36, damaging one of their buildings. Another building was flood damaged during a hurricane in 1938. In 1935, they bought up the test indicator company, Last Word. And in 1940, they purchased Napier bandsaw blades. During World War II, Starrett was able to increase its manufacturing output 800% by building a new facility and running their plants 24-7. In 1956, Starrett opened their first overseas plant in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and in 1958, they opened a plant in Scotland. Starrett would add gauge blocks to their lineup with the purchase of the Weber Gauge Company in 1962. That same year, they purchased Rhode Island Tool, a hardware manufacturer, and opened a subsidiary in Canada. In 1964, a company called Transu and Williams attempted a hostile takeover of Starrett. By this time, the Starrett family only owned around 2% of company stock, with 40% being owned by the company's employees. Transu and Williams had bought up 30% of the company stock, but they were outvoted at the board of directors meeting and were unable to take control. Starrett bought back Transu and Williams shares for $31 each. In 1984, the Starrett family bought back 341,000 shares of company stock to prevent a repeat of the hostile takeover attempt. Starrett purchased the Herman Stone Company in 1970. Granite surface plates are a prized item for machinists as they can be made perfectly flat and won't ever warp over time. In 1986, Starrett bought the world's largest tape measure company, Evans Rule. Starrett promptly closed Evans U.S. and Canada factories and moved production to their Dominican Republic plant. In 1990, Starrett acquired Sigma Optical to help them with their coordinate measuring machine market. These machines could automatically measure objects and get more precise measurements than measuring by hand. In 2002, Starrett's North Carolina plant was raided by the FBI. There had been an allegation of fraud relating to their rapid-check 
coordinate measuring machines. The investigation would be concluded in 2003 with no charges being filed. Sterrett had previously recalled all of the rapid check machines and would soon exit the coordinate measuring machine market. Despite not catching any charges, the stock price tanked in September of 2002. Sterrett opened their first plant in Suzhou, China in 1996. So yeah, some Sterrett tools have been made in China for over 25 years now. In 2004, the company closed their warehouses in Skipton, England, Alum Bank, Pennsylvania, and Cleveland, Ohio, offshoring those operations to the Dominican Republic. Another plant closed down in 2018. In March of 2024, Sterrett announced that they would be bought out by Middle Ground Capital, a private investment firm, for $16.19 a share. And yes, that's the actual company's logo. It looks like they're one of those companies that buys other companies, polishes them up, and then sells them. On their website, it says that they position a business for sale. So my guess is, Sterrett might have been facing some financial issues, although from their stock price, it looked like they were doing okay. The question is, what is Middle Ground going to do with the company? Are they going to try and cut costs by closing down the USA-based manufacturing plants? It's a legitimate question. There is one word in the press release that caught my eye. Reshoring. Now, they don't say that they're actually going to do any reshoring. They just want to be positioned for it. Maybe that's some copy-paste thing that they just put in all of their press releases. I don't know. Sterrett's been an international company since the 1950s. And reshoring is kind of the opposite of what most private equity firms do. Middle ground has only been around for like five years, but in that time, they haven't run any of the other companies they bought into the ground yet, so there still might be some hope left for Sterrett. Also, as of March 18th, the merger isn't a done deal yet. It still has to be approved by the shareholders, and there's already some lawyers coming out of the woodwork looking to block the sale. I think it'll still probably go through, though. Sterrett tools were always a little too rich for me. Most of mine I picked up used. Their steel rules are legendary, as is their automatic center punch, and I love their little baby tap handle. But their most valuable tool to me is this, their Tools and Rules book. This is indispensable for a newbie. It explains how all the measuring tools work. It's how I learned to read that micrometer. You can get this from them for free. Just go to their website under the Literature section, and there's a form where you can order this. You can also get these cards with decimal and metric conversion tables on them. They even have a poster size version, which I framed and hung up behind my drill press. If you want more info on Sterrett, I put links to all of my sources in the video description. There's a great article on companyhistories.com, which goes into sales figures and other details as well as a link to a book Sterrett themselves published in the 1970s, which gets way more in-depth on their early years. So, that's it for this video. Let me know your thoughts on the merger situation. Do you think there's a chance that it might not go through? Be sure to check out my other Tool Lore videos, where we go over the history of other tool companies. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.